Hey everybody, welcome to part three. Uh, this part's more about assigning policies and permissions to groups and users. So I'm going to start by changing something in a group policy. So all I've done is logged into a Windows XP machine that is on the domain. And I've logged on a student one, which is very good. In a, in a school environment, for example, this wouldn't be very good because, for example, now when I log off and log off, Something that the system is doing at the moment and which it does by default is when I press control or delete to log in it keeps the last user's username which has logged in. So in a school or college environment ideally you would want this to remain blank and stay blank every time a user logs out so that the next user can log in quickly next time they come to use the computer. So if I go onto my Windows Server 2008 installation, the domain controller. If I click on start and go to all programs, administrative tools, and if I look for group policy management, I will then be shown a window like this. This is how you will see it the first time you go on. You need to expand uh, the forest route, contoso.com, and you need to go into domains, and you need to expand contoso.com. And you can see at the moment there is a default policy assigned to everybody and what we're going to do is assign a policy that states that the computers should not hold the username after a user has logged off so in order to do this we're going to go into group policy objects we're going to right click it and press new and we're going to name it no username after logout just a little description of what it actually is. Press OK. It appears there. You now need to right click that and press edit. And these are where you can assign any policy for this or any permission based on this group policy. So all we're going to do is go into the co computer configuration because this is part of the computer. It's not to do with a user. It's just to do with what you want the computer to do. We're going to go into, I think it's policy. Yes, policies. Windows settings, security settings, local policies, security options, and somewhere in here, there you go, do not display last username. And at the moment it's not defined, so we're going to double click on it, we're going to define this policy, and we're going to enable it. So do not display last username is enabled. We're applying it and we're pressing OK. So now that's been enabled. We can close this window. And there it is, no username after logout. We now need to link it as a GPO, a group policy. So you need to right click the domain name, the forest route, right click, link an existing GPO. And now it'll ask you what policy do you want to link to the root. And in our case, we're going to put no username after logout. Press OK. And now you can see it's listed. The default one and our one as well. Now just to make sure this works and to make sure it's fully enforced for everybody, you can right click it and click enforce. This will make sure that it is put in place and enforced 100% completely. So now all you need to do to make sure that this goes out straight away and is updated immediately, you can click start, go to run, and you need to type in GP update space slash force. This is force in a group policy update. So you press OK, you'll get a little command pop command prompt window pop up saying it's updating the policy. And a couple of seconds it will say user policy updated has completed successfully. So if I go back to the XP machine, sometimes you have to restart the computers in order to have a group policy update. So I'm just gonna try and log in, see if it works. If not, I will restart the computer. So I mean I'm going to log out. Log off. And like I said, I may need to restart. I control delete and you can see it is still in there, so I'm just going to shut it down and restart this computer. I'll come back once it's restarted. Okay, so the computer is now restarted, so I'm going to hopefully log in, and there you go, excellent. So it's not kept 
the username or password. In some cases it may do after you've restarted, you may just need to log in once more and log out again, hopefully it will update. So I'm just going to try and log in as student1 again. And I'm going to log out straight away and hopefully it has kept those settings. Logging off. Saving settings. And hopefully we can control delete. You can see there you go, it's kept the username and the password blank, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so I'm just going to show you one more permission on how to, I mean, you can pretty much do anything with the group policies, um, but this is just one more thing. Uh, so I'm just going to go to start, I'm going to click Internet Explorer. You'll probably get an error message now because the Internet Explorer version is so old. Yes, there you go. Um, you can see at the moment it says Microsoft Internet Explorer with nothing after it. Now, all I'm going to do is log out, log off, I'm going to go back to my server. I'm going to make a new policy this time again, and this time I'm going to call it um, IE Provider. So Internet Explorer Provider, which is this is good in, in a company because some people you know some you'll find some places do this. So I'm going to right click it and go to Edit, and this time I'm going to assign it to a user, not a computer. So I'm going to go to Policies, Windows Settings, Internet Explorer maintenance and browser user interface and browser title so I'm going to customize title bar and I'm going to put contasso.com and you will see what this does now and again there's loads of settings in here you can you can specify proxy service for Internet Explorer you can you can choose whether people have access to the control panel um, etc etc now I only want if you remember it previously I, I made a group called students now in this case I only want this policy to be effective for students anybody in the students group so all I'm going to do is right click contasso.com the domain again link an existing GPO IE provider OK and this time I'm going to click on it once left click and security filtering. These are the groups of users that have this policy assigned to them. So I'm going to remove authenticated users. I'm going to press add and I'm going to type in students. Press OK. And that means anybody that is within the students group will now have this policy assigned to them, which is very useful. Like I said before, if you have many students and you don't want to assign it to each individual student, you just put all the students into a group and then make that policy active for the group as a whole. So now that I've changed it, again you need to press run GP update slash force to update the policy immediately. And then you can just wait for it to complete. And it's updated, so I'm going to just go back onto my XP installation. I'm going to log in again, and I'm going to log in as a student, the student one. I have already assigned student one to the student group. I think I did that previously in the in a previous in the in the tutorials. So now if I go to Internet Explorer, you can see you can see give me an error again. You can see it doesn't just say Windows Internet Explorer, it now says provided by Contoso.com and we entered into the box before Contoso.com and now it's updated that and you can enter anything into that box you want and again you can specify proxy servers, you can specify whether the user can access the control panel, you can pretty much mess around with the group policy settings all day long and you can just pretty much do anything and make the computer as limited as you like basically. So I'm just going to log back off here again. I'm also just going to show you that it's only in effect for students because I applied it to the student group so if I log in to my administrator account. The administrator isn't in the students group, so technically, there you go, it doesn't have provided by Contasso.com after it. <clears throat> so, yeah, you can see that it works, 
and it's doing exactly what it should do.